Okay, good. Sorry about that. I, I think I just felt jumping in front of Warner here. Uh, Dave, how excited uh, were your players to hear the news after this wait? So much are we, aren't we? Um, you think they almost wonder if it's, it's real at this point? They were really excited. I thought, you know, the, that Tuesday was, um, was a down time for us. And, um, you know, the Wednesday and Thursday, the strength and conditioning, um, there was some, um, some time off just football-wise. I thought we were able to connect with a lot of them at that point, kind of talk about what they were thinking, what they were feeling. And, you know, they were, um, they were just getting frustrated with, you know, is this going to happen? When is this? Are we, are we really playing to the 26th or we have to play at the 26th? that long uh, to go and when we got the news they were just really excited and so just fired up for them and for our coaches so we're all um, we're all working on getting a plan together but the um, you know I thank Jeremiah Dickey and Mac Rhodes for the work they put in because um, it was a lot of work to get the game and um, we're thankful to have it. You know, you could play a, a less talented team than Houston. It's it's that's got to be pretty wild to then just jump into to game preparation. Um, when did that start in full? Was that a Saturday night, Sunday morning? How has that process gone? Yeah, so we we had a practice on Saturday, and so going into that practice, there was a um, a thought that this could happen, and um, coming out of that practice. Um, walking out of that practice, meeting with our staff, and then having discussions with Mac Rhodes. It was, hey, if there's an opportunity for us to do this, let's do it. And that kind of came together uh, Saturday evening. And so since Saturday evening, we've been you know, breaking down film. Um, we've been cataloging plays and getting ready for game planning. Yesterday, that was all day yesterday, and that's continued all, all day today. And so we're off and running with it. Do you remember anything about uh, Coach Holgerson? I think y'all were probably in your 20s when y'all crossed paths on his staff. Uh, I would imagine he was quite a bit of fun in his 20s. I mean, he still is in his uh, late 40s. What do you remember about him? Um, he was a great person. I remember uh, just being very innovative. When, when we were there at Tech, uh, so I was a grad assistant, so Dana was the guy behind the scenes that was really making everything run. And so there's a lot of great coaches on that offensive staff. You know, Robert and I um, got so much respect for. He's, um, he's over at University of Virginia. Um, Sonny Dykes, you know, obviously Coach Browse on that staff. Uh, Bill Beanbow, um, who's over at Oklahoma now, is on that staff. But the guy that was kind of um, – keeping it, everything kind of running and was really instrumental, I think, in that offense there. there you know, this was the Cliff Kingsbury years was Dana. And, um, you know, I'd always stop by and visit with Dana, and he would be doing a million different things. He was in charge. I think at that point we would have um, video, we'd have movies, movie clips that we would pick for each coach, and they would present it to the team, you know, to start the meeting. And so, so that was still like blockbuster video days. And so I remember specifically coming into Dana's office and he's got like blockbuster video on one side, looking through Tombstone to find a clip. And then on this hand, he's trying to cut up tape. And so it's, that was Dana right there during those years. And so I've got a lot of respect for him, hard worker, um, authentic, um, smart. It's gonna be a challenge for us. Go to Matt Roberts next. Lee Tombstone. Yeah, Dave, I just want to ask you about the, the difficulty of normally y'all have these schedules planned out and ready to go and just in a week getting it turned around and getting prepared for a team like Houston. And how much has Dana changed and put his spin on what y'all were doing there at Tech in the early 2000s? Yeah, so um, there's, there's quite a bit that's, that's different. So there's a lot more max protect throw. Um, than I can ever remember. Um, 
And so there's a lot of, lot of that on tape from last year. I think the run game is, um, there's some heavily influenced run game from um, what looks like what Oklahoma does. Um, so there's a lot of counter GT and um, they'll try to block. If you try to chase it down from the, from the puller side, they'll try to seal it with a tight end so you can't chase it. And then they'll have an RPO second level read where they can throw it. Uh, you know, the, there is the quarterback run game, which the quarterback scares you running the ball. Um, he's, he's a good-looking athlete and has been able to make some plays. So there's some differences in there that are apparent. Um, I think um, there's also some trickery. You know, the, there's a, a fly sweep, um, and the, the guy will pull back and try to throw the ball. Um, the screen game is is one of the things that's that's still there, and so the screen game is very um, effective. They do a great job of getting their linemen out in front and creating seams, and you know their skill is uh, what jumps out at you at your first when you watch the tape. And they're adding even some more skill just with transfers and things that are going to be available. So it's a challenge, you know. And so we're in the process of. Uh, of deciding kind of how to handle all that today, but uh, yeah, it's it's impressive to watch. They're uh, offensively, they they stress you out. Go to David Hale. Hey, Dave. Uh, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, what actually goes into prepping when you don't know that you have this opponent until? You know, six days out from when you would be going to play the game, and, and and what was sort of the immediate decisions that you start putting into into process of of trying to you know send people in various directions to accumulate tape and game film and uh, all of that kind of stuff. How does that work for you? Yeah, no, I appreciate that question. I think the guys that hit that hits the most probably the grad assistants and some of our analysts. You know, so. Um, when this was kind of being worked out, we had, you know, a plan A and a plan B. And so a plan A was, you know, we just got our game postponed and our next game is not until the 26th. And so, you know, at that point it becomes, we've been practicing since the summertime. Our game's not to the 26th. We've got this extra time. Let's try to keep, let's try to hit some highs in terms of uh, our run speed let's make sure we're tackling and let's make sure we're having appropriate contact, but let's not overdo it. Let's not wear our guys down. Let's kind of try to find that middle, that middle ground of the appropriate contact, the appropriate time on feet and that. And then also kind of including some coaches and players getting together, kind of brighten the mood from, you know, the postponement that just happened. Plan B was, Hey, we're going to have an opponent, and we're going to be playing right now, you know. And so, um, and a lot goes into that in terms of who that opponent is. Well, you know, we were riding, we were riding with Plan A, and and so Saturday was a was a practice. It, typically, it was going to be a scrimmage, but we made it a practice um, later in that week, uh, last week, anticipating that we're going to find ourselves a game, and we didn't want to have a big scrimmage, and then. Um, roll out into a, a game week. And so we made it a practice. And um, we originally had Sunday off, and then Monday was going to be off, and then get back on Tuesday. And so, um, you know, when we found out about this happening on Saturday, as it was kind of developing, we talked to the GAs and analysts about, you know, this is what they call the bait and switch. You know, I imagine they had some plans on Saturday night or whatever. And so uh, that, that changed to uh, a bunch of coffee and a bunch of breaking down tape. And so we're all thankful for that. Um, and uh, we're, we're watching all that stuff right now. Next up, Sam Kahn. Hey, Dave, I'm curious with as quickly as this came together, do you think college football could benefit from scheduling a little bit more short intervals as opposed to some of the long-term scheduling that we see now. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? I could see where that could be from a fan perspective. I could see the benefit in that. 
Um, you know, I could see that. Um, there's a little bit of a, like I remember, and I don't know if I should be saying this um, here, but, um, you know, I spoke to um, some of the coaches about it earlier was, you know, when I was growing up, I was a big baseball card collector and um, when I was a little kid, you know, and so it was really important. Like, you know, I, I have a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card and, you know, even before that, you know, like, hey, there's here's a George Brett or, um, you know, here's a Fernando Valenzuela. And it just felt like as we were going through this process of like, hey, I've got a I've got a Steve Sachs, right? Do do um, can I trade you for a Steve Marshall? You know, it just felt like we were trading baseball cards a little bit, and that was just very weird for me. And um, I'm glad that it worked out. But I think from a coaching perspective, it it gets there's so you're such a planner by nature, and you're so um, organized. And hey, this is what we're doing. You know, nine months from now, man. You know what I mean? And so when it gets to something like this, it kind of, um, it shakes you a little bit. And so um, we'll take it because it's it's what we need right now. But, you know, I, I can see that from a fan perspective, from a coaching perspective, you like to have things kind of laid out. Next up, Max Olson. Dave, since I'm, I'm sure over the years you've spent a lot of time getting ready to play a, a new coaching staff, how much do you like being on the other side of that this week uh, where Dana's got to dig into all these different teams to watch? And what just what's it like this week when, for you, I mean, nobody kind of knows how you guys are going to line up and play? That's probably our one um, – the one thing we've got going for us going into this, our strong positive is what you just brought up. And so we had talked about that. You know, if we were going to play on the 26th about uh, scrimmage – uh, here and how how much do we open it up and if we do open it up and people come and they're taking video of it do we want that and so I think you, when you're looking offensively you're looking at at, at uh, North Carolina tape you're looking at LSU tape you're looking at Baylor tape and then obviously you know defensively you're looking at Baylor tape Lafayette tape and LSU tape it'd be great if we get a few more teams in there but I think that's about where it tops off and so We'll take it. You know, I think there's been a lot of work of, on our part just prior to this of kind of morphing all that stuff together so that all of that's a real thing and it fits and the players can move in and out of these uh, different um, systems that are now one. And so it'll be, um, it'll be good to finally kind of get it on a Saturday and see it, see it live. We'll go to our friend John Werner. Hey, Dave, uh, I got in a little late. I don't know if this has been asked, but uh, have, are you going to tell your players about the history of this series at all and maybe a little bit about the Southwest Conference or any, any of that kind of thing? We will, yeah. And so I think we've talked about that already some as a staff and just the tradition and the rivalry. And, and we'll, build, we'll build on that as we go throughout the week. But... Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for our rivalry or the history. I've got a lot of respect for for Houston right now, just as they stand and how they're how Dane is building that team with the talent level that they've got, the coaches that they have. You know, we were talking earlier just about the connections with the coaches, and defensive staff wise. A lot of the, their staff has visited me at LSU, and so I've got good relationships with them and. A lot of respect for him, and then offensive staff wise, I think like Brand Jones was a, a player when I was at Tech, and um, you know I've, I think in 2016 Southern Miss played us um, when I was at LSU, uh, and uh, Shan Dawson was the OC then, and then obviously just knowing Dana for a long time, and so there's a lot that goes into this game. I'm really fortunate that we got it. Go to Jack Allen. Dave, you mentioned last week whenever the game was canceled that the players were a little bit down about not being able to start the season. How well have they handled and recovered and dealt with all of the turbulence, I guess, that's gone on in the last few days? 
um, good. You know, I feel like I, I get text messages of like, um, you know, coach, you know, what's next? Or coach, doesn't matter, let's get better. And so these are all things that we talk about. And so they're kind of spitting it right back at me. And we've got a great group of guys, so proud of them. And, you know, really looking forward to taking the field with them on Saturday. And, you know, they were so happy when they have this opportunity. And, you know, it just, um, you'd like to say in, in a perfect world that it doesn't affect your day to day when there's not a goal right in front of you that you know that you're inching towards. Uh, but I think the reality of it is that it is. And so for us to have something that we're, we're all on board and all unified in um, preparing for it, it certainly helps us out. Bryce Cherry. Dave, uh, you, you hit on it earlier about uh, being a planner by nature as a coach and, and uh, you know, not – really knowing what was going to happen sh shook you a little. I don't get the sense that, that you are an anxious guy. Uh, did you ever get anxious during that time? And, and uh, you know, game gets canceled. Maybe you're having a scrimmage. Now you've got an opponent. I mean, uh, you know, was that a little bit of a roller coaster of emotion? Well, this is it right here, man. I'm all shook up. This is how it <laughs> looks. <laughs> No, I think, you know, um, I'm, we're, we're fortunate to have a game, and I'm fortunate to be around just great people that do whatever they can to make things work. And I think just understanding the time that we're in and the circumstance and kind of the adaptability of it is, is just crazy. Right away, we, you know, our game's postponed, and there's a, I'm, I sit down, and I'm in a meeting, and they're talking about, well, we could play this team, or we could play that team, or what about this team? And right away, I'm thinking of the baseball cards, and I'm going, man, this is crazy. You know, I'm saying this to myself, and you just got to click right into it and go with it, you know? And so um, we're fortunate that we've got ourselves a really good game and, and opportunities to go out and, and, um, and show what we got. And so I know our guys are excited for it. Jerry Hill. Dave, you were talking about some of the ties with the staffs and stuff. Justin obviously played there, even coached there a year ago. Joe Wickline was with Dana at West Virginia. Did those things help in terms of preparing for this game? It does. You know, so we'll use every available resource that we have. And so um, I think the thing is when we're addressing those guys is real specific um, – things that can come up just in, you know, defensively film study is, is there some, something that Joe can help with? Is there something that, that uh, Juice can, can clarify on? And I think um, those are all things that have been hit upon. And, you know, there is, there is a bunch of, uh, bunch of ties um, to Houston. And so it's, it's good to uh, utilize every advantage that we got. Dave, you uh, obviously had to shift gears a little bit, but how how ready are you to just to play a game, just to get a game under your belt? No, I think we're. I think our um, by by that question, I would say both, both player wise, I think we're more than ready. I think coaching wise, you know, if we weren't going to have a game, we were going to have another kind of mock week, game week. We were going to have another kind of mock game on Saturday. And so, um, you know, we've had a fair amount of practicing for the practice or practicing for the game. So I feel as if we're ready. You know, I think the, um, the opportunity to go out and, and um, put our best foot forward is, is certainly there. And, you know, the, the, the leadership of our group, the, um, the, the character of our group, I'm ex I'm excited to put that to put that on display. Thanks, Dave. Back to Matt Roberts. Yeah, Dave. I know you guys have been busy preparing for an opponent, but just given the the games that were played, even going back to Navy last Monday, the comments of Kenny Matsuolo that his team just wasn't ready. Have you been able to learn anything from these early season games that you guys can apply to game one on Saturday? We use that. Um, that game right after that, that those uh, there's a couple clips that we use to just to talk about 
um, you know, it's a physical game and how important contact is and just the mindset of it and how, um, you know, just in an open space. So if if it's good versus good and it's O versus D and we're competing in a practice and it's as good as we can get it, what we want to do on defense is thud them up. And a lot of times it's – and so thud is full contact, right? I'm going to work to get my chest under your chest. I'm going to uppercut and uh, I'm going to bring my hips and I'm going to um, more or less wrap you up and then let you go. And that's – in space, that's hard to do. That's really it's, – it's harder to thud than it is to tackle. You could tackle in space, possibly leave your feet – roll, um, like a wrap and roll tackle, maybe um, cinch the knees and roll and get a guy down and the whole thing to go in space full speed and long stride to a short stride, under control, use your leverage, thud them up, hard to do. And so we made a big point of, of taking those opportunities that come the best opportunities to tackle are when we're going in team, when we're going full speed and make the most of it, and we use the example of um, BYU Navy. And you, on, on the other side of it, too, just offensively, right, the opportunity to, f to, to, to finish blocks, keep guys up, but take that type of mentality that we're going to move this line of scrimmage and this is us. And, the, and I think, th you know, the opportunity to be physical and to be uh, assertive and to be dominant up front along with just all the protocols and – Hey, stay away from this person and don't get close to that person. Um, you know that's the that's the trick. And I think uh, there's a couple games that have that have come up that have illustrated that it can be done. And so we're certainly going to try. Thanks, Dave. Go to Joseph. Hey, thanks, Dave. Uh, how you doing? Okay. Um, was wondering if I'm not mistaken, uh, your first full time coaching job was at Houston. Any memories uh, of a young Dave at the time? Was it finally getting a paycheck or was it living in the big city or, you know, what do you remember from your time at Houston? Um, I got married just before. And so when I left tech, um, Ron Roberts, or um, I'm sorry, um, Ron Harris was our defensive coordinator at Houston. And, um, you know, Art was head coach and um, was a great staff. You had Oscar Giles on that staff. Uh, Thomas McGahey is on that staff, special teams coordinator. Um, yeah, I remember going out on the track and going, you know, is that Carl Lewis? Is that really him? You know, I remember that. Uh, I remember going to the basketball games and the excitement that came with that. Um, I can't remember where we lived. I think there was a time where my wife and I, so no kids, just married, where we ate out quite a bit. Uh, I think the downtown still in Houston is when they were – that was when they were really going to make a push to really improve downtown. It was around that time. Uh, but we lived – there is a spot in Houston where there's two – star. I remember there's there was two Starbucks on the same street facing each other. I can't remember the name of the street. But that, West Timer, I believe. Yeah, we lived right by there. We had an apartment. And so that was our kind of our neighborhood. And so there was quite a bit of um, – on the time that we did have, you know, maybe it's a Sunday brunch or something like that. I just remember eating out a lot. I'm, I don't think anyone cooked. <laughs> so I don't know when the next time that'll be, but um, that was, I remember that, you know, the, the team in particular, uh, Wade Cole was a great player for us. Um, uh, Joe um, Everson was a linebacker that so much talent. You just wanted to see him um, be healthy. Um, geez, we had an undersized D lineman that was a hell, that was a great player. I can't remember his name, um, but and then offensively, we were you know uh, Kevin Cobb. We had some great players offensively, and it was you know I I remember playing going to Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl and uh, landing in Hawaii. I remember I was all stacked in red, and I went to the to a, a coffee uh, spot to get a coffee. And I remember everyone looking at me like I'm, you know, uh, we're, so we're playing the Warriors and they just, they, um, they're, they're uh, giving me the evil eye, you know, just, I, I didn't wear red after that, you know, and, and it was, I think it was during that game 
that we had there was a brawl or something I think at, at during that game and so there's yeah the memories are kind of coming back it seems like another life ago to be honest David Smoke Dave now as a head coach did you ever have a search or can you now get a Honus Wagner card or a Mantle rookie card <laughs> I don't, you know, I was a, a big, um, I still am just a big Dodger fan. So I always held the Dodger cards probably more uh, in a higher regard than most. So I was probably a sucker, I imagine, that people would get me. But uh, my brother, I think, actually had a better collection than me. But um, yeah, I don't know. That, 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 I guess that is a, um, that's a deal where you, you know, when I was younger, I just remember. Um, WGN would always be on California, so we would listen to Harry Carey and Steve Stone, and, and then later on in the day it'd be, it'd be Vince Scully and Don Drysdale, and I just remember having our cards when I was just a little kid, and so who who would have thought it would have that all would have come up in 2020 trying to schedule a game? But it sure felt like that though. Last thing is you were going to have a really good non-conference schedule, probably the best Baylor's had in a decade. Do you like being tested like this because you'll know who you are before conference in this weird year of just one conference, one non-conference game? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I feel real confident in our team. Um, I know that we're going to put our best foot forward. Um, we're going to give great effort. I feel really confident in our coaches. And um, you want to kind of, you want to see where we're at, and so we can improve where we need to improve, and uh, we can continue to progress where uh, we've already made some inroads. But uh, let's play the best we can, and let's let's uh, compete at all times. All right, we'll let John Werner finish this up. Uh, Dave, is Gavin Holmes continuing to do well, and what kind of inspiration has he been to everybody? He's played well, you know, um, he brings, there's a work ethic that comes with him. There is an energy level that comes with him. There's a confidence that comes with him. So, you know, we compete and we have two minute drives and um, we have one-on-ones that we try to make as important as we can to highlight just how important it is to win your one-on-ones. And so there's plenty of opportunities where where we need a play and and Gavin has got a one on one and Charlie's going to Gavin and he's making that play and it's a contested um you know it's a contested throw and he's right there making it and I think he's done that enough in this camp to where guys are expecting that he's going to make those plays all the time and he's walking around like he's the guy and he should you know because he's he's put in the work and you know we're um so looking forward to him doing it on Saturday but um, I've been very impressed with him. He's not a guy that's going to say much, but he just does it with, with his actions. And, um, you know, he shows up when you need him the most has been my, my observation of him. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank Have you, guys. Day.